When it comes to doing cross-referencing with the database, if it's small enough, it's probably not that big of a deal. So if I want to look up the model number 200, look over here, there it is, there's the row, and then find the year, like 2004, pretty simple. But you can imagine if you had a huge database, that could be quite the big deal. So we have the vertical and horizontal lookup functions to help us. The vertical lookup takes the value that you want to look up and looks up in the leftmost column of the database and the horizontal in the topmost row, or the row that you designate, typically the topmost row. So for this example, let's use the vertical lookup function that we want to return the part number for this model, and then we'll set the year as we go through the function. So go ahead, with it being next to the label, because the result will be the part number, hit equals, and then V lookup, there it is. You can see in the pop-up it says looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table, and then returns a value from the same row from a column you specify. By default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. So make sure that it's sorted numerically when it does the comparison and looking up 200 over here in the leftmost column because if not, you're going to get issues. So ascending order, smallest to largest. Also, if you have text that you want to look up, make sure it's from the upper end of the alphabet A all the way down to the Zs. So with it highlighted, go ahead and hit the tab key to pop it open. To begin, you've got the first argument, what value do you want to look up? You can type it in or go ahead and select the cell that contains the value and then hit comma on the keyboard to go to the next argument in the syntax, which is the table array. The array means group of cells, and it's going to be this right here if you want to click and drag to select it, or type it in, A4 colon J15, so A4 through J15, then comma, and it says what column index number do you want to return? Now we're not talking about the labels that we assign to the columns here, but the index, as we talked about in the index training video, in this case, the column number that Excel assigns within a table, wherever that selection may be. And within the table, the leftmost column is number one. Even though that just has labels, it just sees it as the first column. So there's column one, two, three, four, five. So if we want to do 2004, then we'll type in number five, hit enter, and let's see if it checks out for model 200, row 2004, checks out. And then if you come down here, you want to update the model, but keep the same year, then type in a new model number, Hit enter, let's see, for 250 for the same year, checks out as well. Now you need to know that the vertical lookup function takes the value here and does a equal to or greater than, meaning that if I come up here and I type in 201, hit enter, it looks at the 200 row and it says, okay, it's equal to 200 or it's greater than, but less than 250, I'll keep it in the 200 row. So in the 200 row in the fifth column brings up the same number. But that could present a problem because if you need to have an exact match when you're looking at part numbers, because you need to know whether or not you have it in stock and not get the wrong part number, then what you need to do is to come down here and change the vertical lookup by double clicking on it. And we've got a total of one, two, three, four arguments. We only did three. The last argument by default, if you click at the end of it, well, just before the last parentheses, you can see the column index is the second to the last argument. Hit comma to go to the last one. By default, it's going to do a, an approximate match lookup, like the equal to or greater than. If you want an exact match where it has to equal exactly 201, that if it's not found within the database, you want a result that says not available, go ahead and double click on that. So it says false, not an approximate, but it has to be true. Hit enter, and it says not available or not applicable. So that way you can say, okay, we don't have the model 201. Look somewhere else, as it were. Now, like I said, you can also do text. So if you come over here and you type in, like, let's say, blue, hit enter, and then come down here and say that you want to look up blue, hit enter. Hey, it found it. Now, what column? Remember, down below we said it's the fifth column, the year 2004. So blue, starting with the first column, one, two, three, four, five, that checks out. Now, as far as this goes, let me double click to open it back up to see our function. You don't have to have an exact lookup, so you can get rid of the faults here because the default is going to be an approximate. Hit enter because when it comes to approximation with text, it's going to be exact. Blue is blue. I mean, there's nothing like, okay, less than blue is yellow, greater than blue is red. I'm kidding. There's no such thing. So if it sees blue, it'll pull in blue. And also keep in mind that when you have text in the leftmost column, make sure it's sorted ascendingly. So the A's up at the top all the way down to the Z's. Now let's go ahead and hit undo a couple of times to get back to where we were. There we go. Something that didn't, when I double click on this, doesn't have the faults where we get an exact match, so that's gone. Without it, by default, you get an approximate, so let's hit the escape key to get back out. 
And let's do something that I think might be more helpful instead of saying, okay, instead of looking at the year 2004, how about if we want to do 2005? That's the sixth column. I'd have to come in here and double click each time to update it and say, okay, delete that, type in six and hit enter. Unless, of course, you want to have another cell that will designate the column for you and say, okay, every time I type in a number here like four, hit enter, it references that and it says, okay, go to column four. You can do it that way, but what I'm thinking is, is that how about if we just type in the years? You get the idea. The point being is that you can go ahead and copy and paste the function down below. So when you type in a model number, it'll update it and return all the values for those different years for that same model. So to do that, let's go ahead and select this, hover over the bottom right hand corner until you get the black cross. Now if you watch my previous training videos on the autofill handle, when you double click really fast, it copies and pastes the function down below, but you're going to get issues because by default we're working with relative referencing, meaning that when I go down row by row when I copy and paste, it's also going to take the function and what's referencing, wherever it's referencing, like the model number and the table, and bring it down row by row. So if I come down here and double click, what's going on here? It's no longer referencing the top row and the one below it because we went down two rows when we copied and pasted the function using the auto fill handle. So hence, it drops it down two rows down below as well. So that ain't going to work. Let's go ahead and hit the escape key and go back to our original cell containing the vertical lookup function. Double click. And we need to tell it to stay in two places. First off, when we go down row by row, we don't want it to lose sight of the model and go down to the next empty cell, but stay there. So if I come over here to the reference, which is cell E17, remember, we're going down row by row, so I just need to say to stay in row 17. If we were going over column by column, I'd have to say, okay, stay in column E. But since it's just row by row because we're going down, then go ahead and put the absolute reference the dollar sign in front of row 17 so it always stays on that row. And then also for the table array, we want it to stay in row 4, always the top row here, topmost row, so we'll add a dollar sign to that. And then you got the colon through all the way down to row 15, so we have to put a dollar sign in front of number 15 and then hit enter. And then we can go ahead and select it, bottom right hand corner, autofill handle, the black cross, double click really fast, and hey, there we go. Now all we need to do now is to set these to the appropriate column that's referencing in the database for the year. So the year is column what? That's the first one, that's the second one, so it's column two. So I can double click and come over here at the end, save reference, column two, hit enter. Then the next one will obviously be column three, enter, and then the next one will be column four, enter. So whatever part number I'm looking up, at least for these three right here that I'm focusing on right now, if I do 100, let's see if it checks out. So for 2000, I ought to get 82, 2001, 35, 2002, 20, or 205,315. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.